Praise the Lord. Do we have people who trust in God and who believe in miracles? Do we have people who believe in miracles? And we have one right here in this JCC. There is a Jesus who is healing. He healed them. He's healing now. Give a round of applause for our God. Amen. You may be seated. The First Lady of the Republic of Kenya, Mama Rachel Ruto, our Father of Faith, Bishop Mamboleo. It is always good to recognize fathers. Thank you for always being there. Even at this age, you are still looking very smart. Oh my God, you just, I pray that we, at your age, we will also be looking that smart. God bless you. Our Bishop Alan Kuna and your beautiful wife, we bless God for you. You know, the first time you came to Langata, my father, spiritual father, is just sitting there. And I know you are friends and covenant brothers. You came and that is what you said, your covenant brothers. And you preached and I remember you said, talked about faith. And this time you are talking about faith of building a house for a hundred million. I remember you had not built it, but you said you are going to have it. And you did. And it was all over in the papers. <laughs> As a testimony of faith. So bishops, prophets, and all people who have come to today, our honorable members, the MCAs, and the, the daughters and sons of our father, Bishop Alan Kuna. Let me tell you something. God will always ask, is there a reason? Is there a reason for God to heal our father? And you know, there was a reason. I remember the wife has been here, sons, daughters, and everyone has been praying. But let me tell you, God may not have healed you because of that. Because he healed you because you know who you belong to. You have knowledge of him. You have been faithful to him. I remember two years ago, you are still sick. We invited you for a leaders conference. In Nyeri, you came, you preached, you could not actually stand. You preached, you went, you sat down, you are sweating profusely. I could remember. And we started to pray for you also. Because we thought he would faint on the altar. You know the way he does it with energy. You even left before. And I remember. So when mom called, we were saying, there is a reason for this man to be healed. He loves God. He has served God faithfully. And when people ask, is there anything too hard for God? We can now say, there is nothing too hard for God. Even cancer bows before our God. Then there is another reason. Knowledge. Knowledge of who you serve. And trusting him to the end. Even when it was tough, you are still writing like nothing was happening to you. And trusting God, you know sometimes God will ask you, can you trust me? And I think you passed 
the test. And when you stood here, the last reason, there was a prophecy. And God does not lie. He must fulfill the prophecy. And prophecy and vision are for appointed time. Perhaps if you had been healed before, then you would not have come to prophesy about an ailing economy and it's turning around. Now we can know and now we can celebrate that God who fulfills prophecy has even fulfilled the one he has prophesied. Can you put your hands together for our God? <laughs> Dates don't also lie. Today is the 10th. December 2023. Number 10 is the number of government and 12 is the number of perfect government. And in those two, you are married and here you are again, it's your birthday. And I can say, Kenya, we are in a good position. <laughs> the fourth reason is this. God must make a distinction between those who love him and those who hate him. Malachi 3 verse 14 says, You have said it is futile to serve God. What do you gain by carrying out these requirements, his requirements, and going about like mourners before the Lord Almighty. I am very sure at one point, our reverend, you asked, you served God, he has served God. And here you are going mourning, and you can imagine the bills and emotional turmoil struggle. And perhaps you may have said this to God, and this is what he says in Malachi 3 verse 18, as I conclude to call our mother. And you will see again, I think it is good, then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and one who does not serve him. This man of God serves God. There must be a distinction between him when he is sick and the wicked when they are sick. This one must get healed so that God can be glorified. If you believe in that, can you stand and give God a praise in the house? Our Lord and our God, we want to thank you. We want to glorify you because your word is true and it is faithful. The prophecy has come to pass. And today another prophecy has been given about the economy of this country. We lay a word and a decree upon it that cannot be changed. Indeed, Kenya is going to be very, very great very, very prosperous. And indeed, again, according to the word, revival has broken forth. Now we have a mother in the house. This mother is an intercessor. When you see this mother, do not just joke around. He's a fire. When it comes to prayer, to fasting, to faith, I don't know that we have a better mentor and a better symbol of God's faithfulness. She prayed. And this government, I am sure God had because she did not eat until it came to power. This lady... Our first lady, Her Excellency, Mama Rachel 
Ruto, please come. Bishop, I take this opportunity to wish you a happy birthday. As we have been told, 57 is a prophetic number. And uh, some of us are just following you behind. We are not very far. <laughs> and Reverend Kathy, together with Bishop, happy anniversary. Let me say, church, that we are very grateful to God because of a gift that we have in this nation in Bishop Alan Kiuna. I'm very blessed myself because together we share spiritual authority, Prophet Teresa Wairimo. And I know there are many in the house also. Uh, the brothers have seen uh, uh, my brother together with your dear wife and congratulations. I didn't make it to the wedding, but I'm sure we'll have a cup of tea together. Thank you to all the sons. And now to uh, Prophet Teresa, there are so many grandchildren here because of uh, Bishop uh, Alan and Reverend Catherine. Let me say that uh, we have really a blessing in you in this nation, like as I was saying. And Bishop, we thank God because the Lord has healed you. He is indeed a God that healeth all our sicknesses and diseases. I know we met many times, even in church at FEM with Prophet Mom, and I know your words of wisdom. Even when this government was coming into being bishop, I remember the prayers we held together. I remember the conversations we had with you, with mom, and even my husband and other politicians. And you know, bishop, I actually didn't know you had been away for one year. I thought you were just away for a few months. But let me tell you something, bishop. You are blessed. You are blessed. I know you have said that yourself, but it is also good to hear from other people. That woman seated next to you is a jewel. We met many times. She came for the meetings we had at FEM. We had conferences, but she always had a smile. I did know that she had missed you for one year. I know once she said she had been in the U.S. to see you and back. But having Reverend Catherine hold the church together for one year, I must say that you are a blessed people. Let's give it up for Reverend Kathy Kiuna. Thank you so much, Reverend Kathy. And I know you like teasing Bishop here and there, but he got the right one. He did not make any mistake. And so what can we learn, church? from Reverend Kathy and Bishop Alan. I want to encourage the women in the house. And I know today we have our politicians here and we have many mothers, we have many sisters that really women can do great things. Women can stand for the nation. Women can stand for their families. Women can stand for their communities. Women can stand for the church of Jesus Christ. If as a woman, you have been discouraged. Maybe you walked into this service today and feeling a little bit woye woye. Let's see what, how God has used Reverend Kathy Kiona in the work that she's been able to do in the last one year when Bishop was away. Thank you so much, man of God, Prophet Dominic, for your encouragement this morning when you preached. And I think what I take home is the last question that you asked us. How is daddy doing? Just like Joseph asked the brothers. I know many of us had an opportunity to pray for Bishop, maybe even to go visit, maybe to have a telephone call with him, or even, uh, you know, like with the technology. And many of you wanted to know how Bishop was doing. But today we stand here, Bishop, celebrating the goodness of God in your life. You know, Bishop, when you stood here and you took the microphone, actually, I knew that you are back. <laughs> what did you people think? Bishop is back, isn't it? And Bishop, thank you for praying for the economy of our great nation. 
I know God has blessed you. Just like my sister, Pastor Dorcas, has said, yes, we know the testimonies uh, that you have. And I know you encourage people not to be poor, but to have something. And that is exactly how God is using you when you see the newspaper and things are saying otherwise. You want to bring people back to what God wants for our nation. An economy that is thriving. And our politicians have spoken here. But I want to tell you, people of God, just like my sister Dorcas has said, Kenya is in a good place. And allow me at this juncture to bring you greetings from the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Ruto. A man like uh, Weshimiwa Sabina has said, together with his deputy and the politicians that were prayed into office, and we know what Prophet Teresa Wairimo has said, whatever is prayed has to be sustained by prayer. This government that was uh, brought into office through prayer has to be sustained by prayer. And I know for sure that you have not gotten tired praying for this nation. Things may look bleak right now, but I can tell you, your president, his deputy, and all the leaders are not sleeping. And for us, we are not also sleeping because we are praying for them and asking God to help them. So let's continue to pray for our nation. And I know that God is going to do us good. We have a great nation called Kenya. And we don't have another nation. We are happy to have our visitors from all over, from Tanzania, uh, we are happy to have our friends from Ghana. But Kenya is the country that God has given us. And I want to tell you that our president doesn't just think about Kenya, but he thinks about the entire continent of Africa. Bishop, you know, when I was thinking about uh, coming, uh, Reverend Cathy had invited me about maybe three weeks ago, uh, Reverend, and I confirmed. Actually, we were having a cup of tea after almost like uh, some hours of prayer, and I told her that I was going to be here. But everything had it against me not to be here today. Even up to Friday, I remember my office called and told you that I may not be able uh, to come. But this morning, I woke up and I said, I'm coming. And here we are. And I'm happy that uh, I have not also missed in the prophecies that have been given today, even concerning our individual life. And as I was thinking about coming, the Lord took me back uh, to the 90s. And there is a famous uh, gospel a singer from the U.S. that sang a song that I want to conclude with. And I want to ask Reverend Kathy, because she's a very good singer, just to come here. She will help me hold the mic and we'll sing together. And maybe a few of the worshippers, please come. Uh, please, the worshippers. I want us to just sing Don Moyen's song. The one that says, I will sing. I will sing, I will praise, even in my hands. That one. That's all. 